everyone. So today we're going to be looking at capture and recapture problems, a really common exam question now, and um, test your ability to understand and, and read a problem and then set it up in a really clear way that enables you to solve it. Um, this follows on from our live lesson, which we did um, today, Tuesday, um, and it just gives us a few more examples of some slightly more complicated questions that will help you um, as a model for when you have a your Hegarty. So the Hegarty that you need to do following this clip is clip number 873. Um, let's get started. So if we look at the first problem, it says Heather, let me move myself, Heather has a large jar of jelly beans. Um, Heather wants to find an estimate for the total number of jelly beans in the jar. She takes out the jelly beans and marks 200 of them. Heather mixes the jelly beans and puts them back in the jar. Heather then takes 140 jelly beans from the jar, three of the, jeans, uh, the jelly beans are marked. Heather then puts all the jelly beans back in the bar. jar. Uh, tongue twisters as well as math problems today. Work out an estimate for the number of jelly beans in the jar. So we're going to find a quick way of estimating how many beans there are in this jar um, compared to just us pouring them all out and counting them one by one. So hopefully we can recognise that this is a capture and a recapture problem because of the way the question has been set out. So remember, with a capture and a recapture problem, you can literally see, firstly, you're taking something out and counting it. So to start with, Heather takes out 200 beans and she marks them. So I've taken something out. She then puts them back in. So Heather then mixes the jelly beans and puts them back in the jar. And then she does a recapture. So Heather then takes 140 jelly beans from the jar and three of those 140 are marked. So she's done a recapture problem. So that's how we trigger in our head that this topic is capture and recapture. And what it needs to remind you to do is to draw a really simple table. Population on one side. Sample on the other. OK, so remember the population always represents the capture. And the sample always represents the recapture part of the problem. So if we look at the population first, that's always to do with the initial capture. So the first thing I do, the first capture I take, so it tells me the first thing I do, she takes all the jelly beans and marks 200 of them. So I don't know how many the jelly beans are all together, but I do, I do know that 200 are marked. So 200 out of all the jelly beans are marked. And remember, when we do this problem, the numerator is always how many are marked or tagged. So 200 out of the total are marked. Then we do our recapture part. So Heather then takes 140 jelly beans from the jar. Three of the jelly beans are marked. So again, the marked is always going at the top. So that's three out of the 140 that she's taken. So again, remember the top always represents how many are marked. Out of the bottom, a possible 140. So there's my problem now represented real simple maths. So now I, need, I know exactly what I need to do to solve it because I know where my unknown is. My unknown is this guy here. This is what I need to find. Alarm bell should go off straight away because your unknown is on the denominator. So your first job is to get that X off the denominator. And we do that through cross multiplication. You've got a fraction on both sides. So this X can come up here and this 140 can come up here and it will get rid of your fraction. So next step would be to write this as, let me give myself some space, I would write this as 200 times 140 equals 3 times x. And if I tidy it up, well, 14 times 2 is 28 with three zeros, and here is 3x. So to finish the problem off, I'm going to do kill, kill, divide both sides by 3 to unstick that 3, and you can find what x is. So let's do the division. You've got 3s into 28000. Zero, zero, zero. Well, 3s into 2, don't go, carry the 2. 3s into 28. Well, 3 doesn't go into 28, 3 goes into 27, so it goes into 27 nine times, so you can carry the 1. 3 doesn't go into 10, but it goes 3 times 9, carry the 1. 3 doesn't go into 10, goes in 3 times, carry the 1. And you can see the pattern here. We're going to be constantly carrying this 
one over. So your answer is going to be 9,333.3 recurring. So your best estimate here would be, if I'm going to round it, because I can't have a 0.3 recurring of a jelly bean, would be to say I've got 9,333 jelly beans in the jar. So there's my estimate here. I am saying that this total number of jelly beans is 9,333. Okay, final part of the question, what assumptions have you made? So really common um, exam question, really, really common, um, just one marker at the end of the problem. So what assumptions have we made? So remember, this is something that we're just going to learn off by heart, this statement. So if you have, what assumptions have you made in a capture recapture problem? We assume the population is in proportion to the sample. Okay, the population is in proportion to the sample. Okay, and the reason why we're saying that is because what we've done is we have made the population we've made the population equal to the sample we've made this population equal to the sample by doing 200 over x equals here 200 over x equals 3 over 140 so by the fact we've made those two fractions equal to each other you are saying that this population is in proportion to this sample okay next question charlotte work i uh, wants to work out an estimate of the number of fish living in a pond. She captures X fish and tags them. Charlotte returns the fish to the pond. The next day, Charlotte catches 50 fish. Of the 50 fish, 32 are tagged. Charlotte, Charlotte's estimate of the number of fish in the pond is 125. Work out how many fish Charlotte tagged X. So, Let's start from the beginning. Hopefully we can spot this as a capture recapture problem because I capture some fish. I capture X fish and tag them. I return them to the pond and then I recapture them. So as soon as you've done that, you know that you're going to set up your problem with a population. And a sample. And remember, the population is all about the capture stage. So the first thing you do. And the sample is about the recapture. So let's look at the population to start. So in this population, I know she captures X fish and tags them. So at the moment, for that first stage, I don't really have much information. So I'm going to leave the population stage for a minute and come back to it. It says Charlotte returns the fish to the pond. The next day, Charlotte catches 50 fish. Of these 50 fish, 32 are tagged. So this one should be nice and easy. 32 tagged out of 50. And remember, the numbers on the top are always the ones that are tagged or marked, whatever the terminology they use is. So the sample is 32 out of 50. Let's go back to our population because they give us a bit more information in this final line. Charlotte's estimate of the number of fish in the pond is 125. This 125 can't go on the top because this isn't the number of fish that are tagged. This is the number of fish in the pond. So now this 125 goes here. And actually what we don't have is up here, we don't have how many got initially tagged. So there's my problem, X over 125 equals 32 over 50. And actually, because this is now slightly different, it becomes a much easier problem to solve because I'm saying X over 125 equals 32 over 50. And X isn't on the denominator anymore. So you don't need to do cross multiplication. All you need to do is get X on its own. So we can go straight into our kill kill method and think to ourselves, right, is there anything I need to move away from the X? Is there anything I need to unstick from the X? So I need to unstick this divide by 125. So to unstick a divide, I times. So I'm going to times both sides by 125. So that leaves me with x equals 32 over 50 times 125, which you can just do in your calculator. So do 32 divided by 50 times 125. And you get the answer 80. 
So that is telling you that out of the 125 fish, initially she captures 80 and puts a mark on them. So that's a slightly different example for you where your unknown is somewhere different in, in this table. But actually the method is exactly the same. And if you wanted to do the same old cross multiplication like you did in the other questions, that would also work. It would just be a slightly longer method. Um, so final one for today. Uh, Ronan wants to estimate the number of honeybees in a beehive. On Wednesday, Ronan catches six, 660 honeybees from the beehive. He marks the honeybees and then releases them. On Thursday, Ronan catches 400 honeybees and notes how many were marked. Ronan then catches, uh, calculates his estimate as uh, 22,000 honeybees in the beehive. How many of the 400 honeybees caught on Thursday were marked? So hopefully we can see this capture and recapture. I capture some honeybees and mark them. I let them go and then I recapture them. So that tells us to initially start with a table like this. Population. Sample. And then you've got here your initial capture. And your recapture. OK. So let's have a look at what information I can put onto it. So for my populations, this is what I do first. For my first capturing, Ronan catches 660 bees from the beehive. So this isn't about how many are tagged. This is about how many um, are caught in total. So he catches 660 honeybees from the beehive and he marks them all. So this is 660 are getting marked. It doesn't say yet how many bees there are in total, so I don't know what that one is. So I'll leave that blank. Let's move across to my sample. It says on Thursday, Ronan catches 400 honeybees and notes how many were marked. So the 400 goes down here because we don't know how many of those 400 have marks on yet. Final bit of information here, Ronan then calculates his estimate as 22,000 honeybees in the beehive. So 22,000 goes here. And it says, the question, how many of the 400 honeybees caught on Thursday were marked? So there is your X. How many were marked in my recapture? How many got marked in my recapture? So again, You've set up your problem, so we can put an equal sign here. We don't need to do our cross multiplication. The reason we don't need to do the cross multiplication is because the x is not on the denominator. So you can just set this problem up now and solve it. So you've got 660 over 22,000 equals x over 400. You're going to do kill, kill. So to unstick that divide by 400, you're going to times both sides by 400. So that kills that. And on this side, you're going to do your 660 divided by 22,000 times by 400. And we should get the answer here of 12. So what's that telling you? That's telling you here, out of the 400 B Bs that were caught in your recapture, only 12 of them would have been marked, okay? And just one final uh, reminder, if you have this in exam and the part B says, state any assumption you've made, remember our assumption is the population is in proportion to the sample, okay? And again, we must, must, must learn that off by heart. The population is in proportion to the sample. Okay, well done, everyone. Just a reminder, go now and have a go at that um, clip 873. Prove your knowledge. And if you need to go back and have a look at any questions, watch this video again. Well done.